Hello, ladies and gentlemen. There's a recipe there for pork schnitzel. I think I said it right. You know what it is. That's a picture of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to show you how I made that. So stay tuned. So, pork schnitzel, what is that? Everybody knows it's a very, very thin piece of meat, traditionally pork, veal, beef, chicken, turkey. It's bashed out extremely thinly and then it is covered in breadcrumbs and then it's fried. I mean, who doesn't like that? There are some schnitzels that do not have crumbing on them, but this one does because, it, I mean, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? What you can see me doing is removing all of the skin and all of the fat and all of the little connective tissues and what's known as silver skin. So I haven't edited this too much because I'm trying to show you, you do need to be a little bit pedantic about this because any of those bits of silver skin in particular that are left on there, when you're trying to bash this out to make it super, super thin, that's gonna make that job harder. So a very lean piece of meat is required tried to research a little bit about schnitzel, the origins of it. Um, it's Austrian, from Vienna to be precise, and the word is German, and it basically means slice, something like that, which makes perfect sense. There are claims that the Italians first invented this in Milan going back to the 12th century, but as I say, I didn't do that much research. And this is me, um, Pounding my meat. No, can't say that. That's not right. That sounds wrong. Uh, beating my meat. No. We're going to flatten this piece of meat with my brand new meat mallet. Anyone's watched some of my previous videos where I had this really unsuitable, lightweight, wooden thing? Well, I finally went and got myself a proper meat whacker. This process still takes a bit of time though because you can't just hammer away like a loony. You have to try to make sure that, that meat mallet lands flat, flush on the surface. So you're more tap, 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 tapping. And the best thing to do is to wait for your partner, your missus or whoever, your significant other, to be trying to watch the telly while you do this. And it, it really will test their patience. That's about five minutes in. I think we're looking pretty good. That's me trying to demonstrate to you how thin it is. There's the other one I made. In the fridge for a little while, while we get our crumbing ready. So that's a couple of eggs being beaten up with, I don't know, half a cup of milk in it, whatever. Basically just to make it a bit thinner. And select your vessels for your flour, your egg, and your breadcrumbs carefully, because this isn't obviously little chicken goujons that are going in. It's a bit tricky, they're big. Season both sides and I'm thinking how do I best turn this over I know bit of paper whack it down and there we go it's exposed the other side so I can give that a good seasoning feel free to give it a brush with a bit of mustard that'll be lovely or sprinkle on some finely chopped up sage or rosemary all things that would be perfectly delicious I went plain on mine so this is a bit tricky it's a faff because you've got a very delicate almost paper thin piece of meat that you know will want to break up and fall in you know to pieces so be extremely delicate I put it down and then I sprinkle the flour on top I turn it over and then when I've got it on this paper again I just think what I do is I just dab away at those bits that haven't got any flour on them I think I might have missed the odd little bit there if you eagle-eyed turned out lush so there's nothing to worry about and so then I'm thinking, okay, I've got to give it a nice dunk, immerse it in this in this beaten egg. Now, usually my method is I don't like to get my hands wet when I do this, so I use a kitchen tool, like a slotted spoon, in this case tongs, but I did have to use one hand because it would have been difficult to transfer it into the breadcrumbs. And again, it's the same process when I do it with the flour, put it down the breadcrumbs, move it around a little bit, and sprinkle the breadcrumbs on top, pat them on there. That's just about done. And the other one to do, I think I'll put a layer of paper between them so that when they're touching each other, they don't get all damp and sticky. And there we go. 
breaded schnitzels. Now let's cook them. You have to be quite generous with the oil, folks, on this one, I'm afraid. This is called shallow frying. I've probably got at least half a centimetre of oil in there. And yes, it will absorb into those breadcrumbs. And yes, that makes this dish a little bit um, delicious, obviously. But yeah, it's not, maybe not something you have every day. So just on a medium heat, keep this going until you've got a lovely golden colour. This is so thin, you're not going to be able to probe this, so I'm not even going to bother talking about temperatures. Basically, once it's golden brown on both sides, it's cooked. Okay, there is no issues there. Now what I'm doing is, I'm resting that, but keeping it warm. So I put my oven on about 50 degrees centigrade, just to not cook it anymore, but just to keep it nice and warm whilst its uh, mate is done. I don't know what sort of shape that came out. That's what I like about this, you know, the, the shapes are unique. There's definitely not uniform, there's definitely no mass production here. Okay, this is the sauce that I have decided I'm going to go with it. Because of the shallow frying and oil, I thought, well, let's maybe have a slightly healthier sauce. So we're going for a butter sauce. And in this butter, I'm going to put some flavours of garlic and parsley because you can't go wrong with garlic and parsley with a savoury dish. It just works. So I finally chopped my garlic and my parsley and now we're ready to do this so yeah that is there's no way of getting around it that's a whacking great big chunk of butter it's about 100 grams that was and I thought well let's cook the garlic in it to mellow the garlic slightly so that I've got that now on a low heat so it's just simmering and uh, yeah parsley goes in and we're almost there and the only thing left to put in that is a little bit of lemon juice and then turn off the heat so it doesn't discolour too much. You've got to do this at the last minute, folks. Once everything else is done, really, ready to go. Because otherwise your lovely vibrant green parsley will start losing its colour, which I found out. Sauce done. This is some, I'm going to say this wrong, spatzel or spetzle. Um, there's going to be a video coming on how I made that soon. But I thought that would be a very nice accompaniment for this. And they're spooning over this delicious low-fat sauce. Oh god! See, that's the thing. It's not hard to sell, is it? It's it's breaded fried meat. I mean, who doesn't love that? Anyway, so thank you ever so much for watching this episode of Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I hope you find this video informative and entertaining, and you'll consider watching other videos and giving us a nice thumbs up, subscribe, comment. This is me starting to eat it, but that's not as interesting. Anyway, so this one's over for now. Until the next one, bye.